Hi, my name is John Stelmack from Stelmack Radiator. We've been a uh, family owned and operated business since 1964. We've been in uh, the same location in Prescott, Arizona since uh, 1979. And uh, I've been doing this pretty much since I was a little kid. Um, the one thing about the radiator business is that it's definitely declining. There's not a lot of shops left and there's not a lot of people uh, left or that are going to be left that have the, uh, the knowledge and the skill to fix the older copper brass and um, antique radiators. So my goal with this is so that, you know, this, this how to do it and the, the art of it uh, doesn't get completely lost. And uh, so I'm really kind of doing this for future generations so that they would have something to <clears throat> look back on uh, to kind of show them, you know, how, uh, how they could still fix these radiators because they're, they're probably gonna be around longer than, uh, than a lot of radiator shops. So anyway, I'm gonna uh, do, do a series on it. Uh, I'm gonna do a bunch of these when uh, different things uh, pop up that I think are, are noteworthy. I'm gonna go ahead and do a video and upload it to my YouTube. And that way you guys can kind of see in segments uh, and quickly go to you know whatever part that you need uh, to, to check out. You know, One might be on heater cores, one might be on radiators, taking them apart, putting them together. Uh, the things that you need, whatever. So I'm going to kind of go through everything, you know, with this business. Uh, again, trying to show you, um, you know, how to do it from a professional uh, perspective. And um, like I said, for future generations, so this doesn't completely get lost. So anyway, hang on. And uh, first thing I'm going to do is take you around the shop and kind of show you some of the things that I need to work with uh, to fix radiators. Stay tuned. So here we are in my shop, taking a quick look around. Uh, you can see how nice it is. We got, uh, we got 42 years of dirt down here, and I'm pretty dang proud of that. So anyway, radiator shops are not known for being the cleanest, uh, nicest places on earth. Um, you know, we work with a lot of uh, acids. We work with a lot of water. I actually saw a radiator shop in Tucson one time, and it had, uh, it was an old house, and uh, they were working in one of the rooms, and uh, they had uh, two inches of water on the ground. It was, it was really nasty, but you know, I don't know. So radiator shops can normally look kind of nasty, so don't be alarmed, but maybe, maybe they're nasty, or maybe we're just scuzzy people in general. I really don't know. But these are some of the things that you're gonna have to work with if you're gonna fix a radiator. So you're gonna need a test tank. This is my test tank. That's, a, that's my lift for the test tank. This is my test tank. This looks like something that you can literally uh, get rid of a body in, um, but nope. You can't. It's just water with an antacid in it. And uh, these are my acids that I have to work with. Now, one is flux and one is tin. The uh, flux breaks up the oxides when you're uh, trying to plate metal. And the tinning compound plates the metal for you. So it plates the metal so that you can use this, which is solder. That's my solder spool. This is a 60-40 uh, solder. And I like to use a... Personally, I like to use a, a thicker, thicker type of solder. Here is... Um, your my torches got one cutting torch that's for doing the heavier uh, stuff with the radiators taking them apart putting them together and then you can see here we have a, um, a finer tip torch that's for some finer repairs and uh, fixing tubes uh, in the radiators and doing finer finer repairs but uh, you'll see a lot more of that later here we have our oxygen and acetylene these are the gases that you're going to need to use uh, to fix the radiators here is uh, here is a sandblast cabinet. You can see it's brand new, just like everything else around here, you know, because because we're fancy like that. So, anyway, but you're gonna need uh, you're gonna need to, to get the metal as clean as you can. That way, it makes it a lot easier to plate it and makes it a lot easier to fix it. If it's if it's dirty, it's you're gonna have a real hard time soldering anything. But we'll probably get more to that too, because sometimes you don't have much of a choice. Um, here is our uh, our cabinet for taking apart the radiators. You can still you can see the solder. All over all over that but you have to do this in a cabinet environmentally you have to do this in a cabinet keep the solder from from going all over the place and, and we've always done a real good job down here of staying true with our uh, you know with the environmental stuff it's not open right now but that's a fan so when I take apart the radiators you know you've got to have good good venting to, to get the smoke out of there because it does get very smoky when you're working with that and you definitely don't want to inhale that stuff so you want good ventilation you want a fan uh, taking it out. You also want to wear your, your mask and all that other good stuff. So uh, this is a washout tank. 
get a little bit further back here. This is a washout tank. You're going to need one of these too. Uh, this is a, on a recirculatory uh, system. And uh, you got a zoo gun in there. So you got, you got a zoo gun and a pump. And uh, you put your radiators in here. And that way you can uh, clean them up, uh, flush them out, and all that stuff before you take them apart, before you try to put them back together. Like I said, you want to get them as clean as, uh, as possible. So that is just a quick peek at some of, the, uh, some of the equipment that you're going to be using. But you're going to see this stuff a lot more. Like I said, I just want to do these videos in kind of bite-sized portions for you guys. That way uh, uh, you can easily access, uh, you know, whichever one that you need to see. So anyway, that's a quick uh, peek around my shop. Those are some of the things that you're going to need to, uh, to fix radiators. Uh, like I said, I'm going to put everything in kind of bite-sized uh, portions for you. That way you can easily access, you know, go back and forth and easily access whatever video you need. Uh, for uh, future generations that might be uh, watching this, this is for you so that the art of this and the uh, skill of this doesn't die. So thank you so much for, for watching and, uh, you know, keep me in mind. I'll be, uh, well, I'm already kind of older and gray, but when I'm even more older and gray and senile, uh, you guys will be the ones that I can still, you know, fix a radiator. So anyway, stay tuned. I'm going to do a lot more of these videos for you guys, uh, kind of take you through all the different steps and Anytime something comes in that's interesting, you know, I'll go ahead and throw it on YouTube. Thanks for watching. I'm John Stomack from Stomack Radiator, and I'll see you soon.